I've got a new pattern to share with you today. It will surely become one of the favorites. I am very sure of that. You'll see a really nice detailed step-by-step -step on how to sew this neckline so you can sew it too, so stay with me. Hi sewing friends, I'm Karina from liftingpinsandneedles.com. Welcome to this channel that is all about sewing, limitless sewing, and I'm especially chirpy today because I'm able to film outside. I hadn't been able to do that for a few days for a multitude of factors, but I just always love it out here. It just gives me another type of energy, and I'm happy to be here to share this video with you today. And it's all about the new ballad blouse from Love Notions. It's a pattern that's been in testing for a little while. It's gone through several variations, always trying to get the best version of the pattern out. And I'm super excited to share my versions. I have a pre-test version that is slightly different from the final version, but not that much. And I'll show you that as well. <laughs> and also my official tester version. Behind the scenes, I'm making more of them that include hacks. And I won't include those versions in this video because then it will be an hour long. So you'll see two versions today. The ballad blouse is so, so, so pretty, so cute. As soon as I saw the line art, I was so excited to sew it and especially excited because it's designed for woven fabrics i have a very nice collection of woven fabrics perfect for this pattern when you look at the line art you see the neckline first that it forms a v neckline the placket is sewn sort of like a reverse facing it's very easy to sew it's not hard at all and it gives a really nice finish to that center right there it's got enough structure for you to sew on buttonholes but actually, if you didn't want to sew buttonholes, you could sew the buttons directly on and just pull on your blouse because the neckline is wide enough for you to be able to fit your head. So you can choose if you want to make that placket functional or non-functional, it's up to you. I don't really have issues with sewing buttonholes. My machine does a pretty good job, so it's not a task I'm dreading or anything like that. On the shoulders, you have two different types of details. You can see that one has a shirt detail here on the shoulder. The other one has a gathered detail on the shoulder. All of these come from a yoke. The yoke doesn't reach the actual shoulder, it comes forward. That means that that gathered detail or shirt detail can be really seen on the front of you. You have separate pieces for both of these versions. They are sort of different patterns, but you sew them in almost the same way. You have a different front piece for the shirt version and a different piece for the gathered version. Plackets will also be a little bit different. They'll have a little bit of a different angle there for the gathered or the shirt version. The hem is curved at the back of the yoke. You have excess on the back so you can create gathers into that yoke. And for this sleeve area, you can choose to make it sleeveless. There's a regular short sleeve with a cuff, it's the one I've chosen. You can have a flutter sleeve. There's a puff sleeve that's short and has a little slit in the center with ties that you make with bias binding. I think that's really cute. And then you have a long bishop sleeve. So five sleeve options there, which is amazing because you can make them in so many ways and you can have so many of these made up in your wardrobe and they can look pretty different. Woven fabrics are the way to go. And as usual, I sort of, in my mind, sort of separate the types of woven fabrics that will be nice. You want lightweight fabrics and there's the flowy types of course and then you have some that are very light as well but are not flowy they don't drape very well and it might be a style that you're sort of going towards so in the flowy types you can make it out of a linen blend i love my linen rayon blends and i've actually chosen that for one of my versions 100 percent rayon a really nice flowy crepe a really lightweight tensile would also be very nice if you want to go fancy, you can maybe do some silk, although I think it would be a bit harder to work with with the placket, but not impossible. And then as for the lightweight wovens that are a little bit more structured, you can go for lightweight cotton, cotton lawn, cotton gauze. Wow, that type of fabric, maybe a light chambray. A broderie and glaze will be nice if it's nice and lightweight. I know I have some in my stash that are very heavy. I would not use those, <laughs> but... It's up to you, your woven fabrics will be great for this, the ones that you have in your stash. In my case, I have combined fabrics for both of mine. I love doing that. I've chosen a rayon linen blend for one and 100% rayon for the other, but both of them have linen plackets. Just because I just wanted to do that and why not? I had the linen for it, so I went for it. One fabric I would avoid for this is crinkle rayon. I know it's a really nice fabric to look at and to touch and it's got a really nice texture when you see it. But just the fact that you need that placket interface, you do need some precise sewing going on in there. And crinkle rayon is the type that's going to stretch out and deform. And not that it's not doable, but I know it would give you a really hard time. So I would avoid making this 
ballet blouse in a crinkle rayon at all costs. Because this is a new pattern, all the sizes are included from extra small to 5X that will go up to a bust of 57 and a half inches and a hip of 59 and a half inches. This blouse is meant to be relaxed fit. You are meant to choose your size based on your high bust so that your shoulder fit and all this upper chest area fits you really well. And then you have a standard bust and a full bust option. If the difference between your high bust and your full bust is four to six inches, the full bust piece will give you a better fit. And just keep in mind that the full bust piece also gives you an extra two inches of ease at the waist and at the hips. If you have a larger bust but you feel that you don't need all that ease at the waist and the hips, you might want to blend into a smaller size at the waist and hips. It's up to you, but at least you know you have enough space for your bust right there. Depending on the size you choose and what type of bust option you choose, you could have anywhere from six to nine inches of ease around the bust and about five to six inches around the hip. The length, if you measure from the nape of your neck down to the hem, is about 26 inches. Considering that and what I prefer, also looking at the reference in the pattern where you have the notch that reaches your waist, that was too high for me and that's just because of my height discrepancy. I'm just three inches taller than the five foot five that Love Notions drafts patterns for, for that height. So I add length between the bust and the waist one and a half inches so that it makes sense and the shape of the blouse will make sense for my proportions. Depending on the height that you are, whether you want to make length adjustments or not, you might find that it looks longer or shorter on different people. That's the only fitting adjustment I make, but that just, that's just a length adjustment. Because the ballad blouse is a brand new pattern, it is 25% off for the first week. So you'll find it at a discounted price until the 16th of May. If you like the style, the release week is always the best week to get it for a little bit less. I will leave you my affiliate link down below in the description box also a link to my blog post has all the pictures if you want to see more details about it my blog posts always have this video embedded in there as well so it's really easy to search and find patterns on my website if you're looking for something specific so i'll leave you all that information down below purchasing through my affiliate link doesn't cost you anything extra at all but i receive a small commission from that sale that helps support the work that i do here on the channel so if you do use that thank you so much as for a really important sewing aspect of this top is that you have different seam allowances in the pattern and I think it's great. <laughs> so basically on the side seams and on the seam of the sleeve, if you're sewing a sleeve, you have half an inch seam allowance and the reason for that is to allow you to sew French seams. It's a really nice finish for lightweight woven fabrics and you might want to explore and do that to give your blouse a really relaxed finish inside. So having that half an inch there means that you can sew your first pass with the fabrics wrong sides together at a quarter of an inch, flip, Put your fabrics right sides together now and then sew the second pass at a quarter of an inch and that will give you the correct seam allowance for that. As for the rest of all the sewing, when you're attaching the yoke or the neckline placket areas, that is three eighths of an inch. That is actually the best seam allowance to be able to sew those areas accurately. Anything that's got to do with necklines, you really don't want to be sewing more than three eighths of an inch seam allowance. It just gets harder. So I'm glad that both of the seam allowances are there. Just be mindful that the side seams and the seams of the sleeve have a slightly larger seam allowance. So if you don't want to do French seams, that's fine. Just sew it with half an inch seam allowance and then just serge the edges. In my case, I didn't do any French seams and I just sewed it at a half an inch and then when I was serging my edges, I just trimmed it off a little smaller so I don't have all that bulk inside. What you'll see in Up Close and Sew Personal is an overview of all the pattern pieces. I am sewing the gathered shoulder version. So that is the one I'm showing you in this video in the context of that version, of course. And you can see how to sew the placket. Now the way to sew the placket will be the same whether you're sewing the gathered shoulder version or the shirt shoulder version, the way that you sew it will be exactly the same. So you'll see in detail how to sew that, how easy it is. If you've never sewn a woven top with a button band or placket, this is a very easy one to do and you'll be able to see exactly how to do that. And I've also added in there a little segment about the short sleeves and the cuffs. It is a little extra detail there that you might want some more input into if you want short sleeves with cuffs. So let's see. This is These are the pattern pieces for the gathered version. 
so it's different if you're making the shirt one but this is for the gathered one this is the front you can see that that is wired because it's going to be gathered into the yoke over there that's why that is narrower this is the back it will have the yoke uniting there and there will also be gathers in the back on the top and then you have a lot of sleeve options I'm making a short sleeve with a cuff and this will be common for all and it's the placket piece or button band essentially it's sewn like a reverse facing this back piece of the placket will unite up there so those are the basic pieces if you're making different sleeves you have different options but at least the front the back the yoke and the placket pieces will be the same there are two yoke pieces because the seams will be enclosed with a burrito roll method to start off the neckline process i'm going to stay stitch the front neckline it is slanted and sections of these are cut on bias so i know it has the risk of stretching and i really want to conserve the shape so that it can fit the placket slash facing that will come on there later so i'll just use a straight stitch normal stitch length and i'll sew within the 3 8 seam allowance on both of these on the back yoke pieces along the top i will also stay stitch because that's also part of the neckline and i'll start from the shoulder and sew up to the middle that's so i can avoid the neckline from stretching more to one side than on the other and i'll repeat that for both of the yoke sections this is the top of the front pieces where the gathering stitches will go and from the center front out i have a line with a chalk that is one and three eighths inch inward i don't want to gather there because this is where the placket is going to go and i want that area to be nice and smooth and not have bulks of gathers under there also on the other side there's another little chalk which is a seam allowance to sew on the sleeve i also don't want gathers there so i'll basically be doing the gathering stitches between these two white chalk marks if you're doing the shirt version it will be a complete different process but in this video you're seeing the gathered version i'm doing two parallel rows of stitching with a 5.0 stitch length the first one is at a quarter of an inch from the edge and the second row is at half an inch from the edge that means i'll have quite a nice gap there to do my gathering and when i sew this onto the yoke with 3 8 seam allowance the gathers will be in between that and it will be a much more stable and neat gather these are the placket pieces and you need to have them in this shape i have written r there so you know that that's the right side of the fabric of course these are right sides together and you have the back one on the top matching at the shoulder seams so we are just sewing these short little seams with a 3 8 seam allowance both of these very short seams on the outer edges of the placket you'll see that there's a little angle i'm making a dot where the intersection of seams would be at 3 8 of an inch i'm then going to do a guide stitch so that it would be easy for me to press the seam later on this outer edge will be pressed inwards before sewing the placket onto the blouse and it will make it so much easier than trying to do it later there is the corner where i have done this guide stitch and i'm going to snip into there because it is a corner it's the only way that you're going to be able to press this neatly to the inside without causing any puckers it will release the tension of that angle right there so then i head over to the ironing board i have my guide stitch at 3 8 of an inch i can remove this later and it will just help me press super accurately instead of just eyeballing that 3 8 of an inch so this is done to the outer edge of the placket, not the inner edge. The inner edge is the one that's going to be sewn onto the blouse and I'm just going ahead and pressing that in. When we get to the corner, you see that that snip really helps you to press in two directions there at that little angle and that will give you a really crisp result like you can see there. That's going to release the tension. You can see that snip opens that area up like that and it's going to look super nice on the other side. There's quite a large curved area. I just have to press very neatly and just going around that curve. Because the seam allowance is not that big, you won't have an issue with excess or anything strange happening along that curve. Just take your time and press it. And then after all this is pressed, we can go ahead and pin this onto the blouse. At this point, you already would have a semi-assembled blouse with your yoke pieces sewn, the burrito method already done. This is when we get to the neckline stage. You need to have the wrong side of the blouse facing up to you. And then you take your placket piece and you're going to place the placket piece right side to wrong side <laughs> although the yoke is the right side of the fabric because you have two layers basically you have the blouse and the placket both wrong sides up but what's actually touching is the right side of the placket to the wrong side of the blouse i have aligned them there along the center and then aligning the seams of the placket to the seams of the blouse now these seams don't actually land on the actual shoulder on the body they are designed to come forward from the actual shoulder and then we just keep going down the neckline you can see the front 
is stay stitched. I'm going to align this corner of the placket to the corner that we have on the neckline there. And then all the way down is straight. At this stage, I want to do something a little different and I want to finish my hem first before I finalize sewing this placket down. So I have pressed my hem by a quarter of an inch twice up. So I know I have it pressed and I know I have an excess of length there, which I did intentionally. And I'll do the same on the other side. Meet that corner of the neckline with the corner of the placket right there, have them align and then keep pinning all the way down. And on the other side, I will also have my hem pre-pressed like memory creases already so that I can go ahead and quickly sew this hem first before actually sewing on this placket right there. So you can see that's pressed once and then pressed again twice by a quarter of an inch right there. I did base this hem down. I like doing that. It's just an extra step that will make my hem extra neat. It is a curved hem. That's why I took the precaution to hand baste it so that it turns out nice and even without any packets or anything like that. So it's nothing I will skip. I like having nice, nice hems and that means for me basting something like this. If it was a straight hem, I would probably just press it and use pins, but for a curved hem, I would definitely go in and do some hand basting there. After taking the time to hem and to pin everything accurately, I can go ahead and sew. I'll show you again that I have the right side of the placket touching the wrong side of the blouse. Everything is matching, the seams that unite the yoke the corners, everything all the way down. And now I can just go ahead and sew with 3-8 seam allowance. I have a little bit protruding at the bottom and I'll show you how I'm going to finish that in a second. But now it's just pretty much a long, long seam, 3-8 seam allowance. Taking care at that little corner of the placket to just do a little pivot there to have that turn out nice and crisp and not rounded. I don't really want a rounded placket there. It's meant to be nice and sharp. So I'm doing my best to get that result right there. I like sewing necklines with 3 eighths of an inch. It's a seam allowance that is okay and I don't think I need to trim down further. Although I will do some snips where the neckline is rounded, especially towards the back, it's very round. So I'm snipping away every half an inch or so. And then of course we are going to do some under stitching that can't be skipped, that is always super important. Here you see the blouse, it's fully extended and the wrong side of the blouse is up. We have the placket on the right side touching my right hand and the seam allowance is actually tucked underneath the blouse, not tucked in underneath the placket. That is the way I am under stitching this so that when we fold the placket towards the right side, all that wrong side of the fabric will stay tucked inside and it won't be seen. I'm using my blind presser foot so I can do that accurately and I'm just taking extra care on those little corners. I've put a pin there to reference where that corner is exactly so that I know and I can take the time to go slower there and be careful to get a nice result on those little corners of the placket. I didn't need to do this with my pre-tester version. I think that one was easier because all of these areas were slightly curved. So I think it's always easier like that, but this one looks pretty neat as well. Okay, now I'll show you what happens at the bottom. I'll just take a few pins out so you can see. This is the right side of the blouse. The hem has already been done. I had that little bit of placket protruding and I'm going to fold it up towards the right side of the placket, fold it and then fold it onto itself again. And that's how I'm going to have a really nice closed placket at the bottom. Now that edge at the very bottom that's open, I'm going to close that by hand and then I'll be ready to just top stitch this placket down. It's going to look super nice, no bulk, and that little area right there will be hand sewn closed on both sides. 
I did go through the iron first and press everything, flip that placket over to the right side so that everything is super neat, put pins while I was on the iron and then I went ahead and hand basted that down. That gives me the confidence that the placket will end up flat and nice and not pucker or move or shift anywhere and I achieved that best by hand basting and it's worth the two extra minutes it takes. I hand based away from where I'm aiming to top stitch so that this thread can come out very easily and again I'm using my blind hem foot with the needle to the left to sew on the edge it's a really really nice finish and because this placket is interfaced it will give you the structure that you need to do your buttonholes in a little bit I wanted to show you my short sleeve it is a typical sleeve I have already sewn the seam of the sleeve and I wanted to show you how this cuff looks like it's not a rectangle you can see that there's an angle right there and in the middle of the angle you need to snip and then open that seam and fold it onto itself and this is a seam that you'll match to the seam of the sleeve it will take away that excess that sometimes makes the sleeve poke out a little bit the way to sew this cuff onto the sleeve is keeping your sleeve wrong sides out and then sliding your cuff on top of it and then sewing it around the edge. You sew the 3 8 seam allowance, serge it and then once it's done you're going to have that seam on the outside of the sleeve but that seam will be hidden once you fold your cuff up and it'll give you a super nice result. Here I'm just quickly sewing it on the round, it's a very simple seam, 3 8 seam allowance and then after that I'm going to do one extra step which is to understitch the seam to make sure that the wrong side of my fabric won't be seen when the cuff is folded up. The wrong side of my fabric is very different to the right, it's got that white type of tone and I really don't want that seen. So I put my sleeve under the sewing machine again, I have the cuff extended, I have the seam allowance of the cuff underneath the wrong side of the fabric that you see there, that is where the seam allowance is and that is the way that I'm sewing on the edge right there with the same presser foot as always and that's how it looks, it will keep the wrong side of the fabric inside and the cuff folded out really nice and neatly. The first one I want to show you is my pre-tester version. The pre-test involves a smaller group of people where some of the details are finalized and decisions are made, you know. This one has one slight difference is that the placket is curved here on this edge. It doesn't have that little corner that you saw me sewing just now. That's the main difference that you see visually. There are other small differences, but that's mainly it. So I chose this polka dot, it's so beautiful. <laughs> it's not that light of a fabric, but I wouldn't say it's medium. I'd say it's between a lightweight and a medium weight. Rayon linen blend, so pretty. And I had a little piece of this in my stash that was just enough to cut the body and the yoke. And that's it, there was no space for the plackets. So red, white, and black is always nice. Had a bit of a red linen piece left over and I cut my plackets out of there. You can see that this is curved right there and the official one has more of a corner same as on this edge right there but it's a small difference you know it's not that noticeable might as well share it because it's very pretty <laughs> only that this is not the way the final version is actually turned out to be i've mentioned that the shoulders aren't actually at the shoulders that they come forward so you can see the gathers coming from there and that is actually where the seam unites on the placket pieces so it's not at the shoulders, you will see it slightly forward there. So that's where you can see the seam there and the shoulder gathers coming from around there. For the shirt version, it will be the same. It's just that you have a small section there that is all shirt. I think because this placket is a contrast, you can really see the shape at the back. It's nice and curved, folded in, top stitched, very pretty. The back yoke seam with the gathers in there, it's all done with the burrito roll method. A couple of weeks ago, I filmed a video about yokes and closing seams for different types of ways. I filmed that so I could have it as a resource so I wouldn't have to film that over and over and over again when I have patterns that have this feature. So if you want to see how to do that, go ahead and watch that video. I will leave the time of the video in the description box you can go directly there in the example i'm showing there there is a box pleat at the back instead of gathers but it's essentially the same thing whether it's a box pleat or gathers the way you sew the seams and do the burrito roll is going to be all the same so have a look at there if you want to see more of that I like to put my buttons two inches apart and have a lot of them. I have nine buttons here. I know there were less buttons and a bit further apart in the pattern. Actually, button holes and button references on patterns are just a suggestion in my opinion because they might not match where your apex is and you really want to have a button right at your bust point so that you don't have gaping. 
at least that's what I do. I try it on when I'm at the, that stage. I put a pin where I want that specific button to be, which is this one. And then I measure up and down and make the marks for all the rest. I like them about two, maximum two and a quarter inch apart. That's how I like them. Anything you see me make with buttons, you'll see that I have a lot of them and it just makes me feel safe that I'm not gonna have that gaping in the front, which is bound to happen whether your blouse has enough ease or not. They just want to gape there, you know, it's, it's very annoying. <laughs> the button placket is sort of like sewing a reverse facing, which is something I've done on dresses and tops. It's sort of the same steps. And from the inside, you can see that you have the wrong side of the fabric there and part of the placket is peeping there because of the understitching that was done. That means that on the right side of the blouse you can't see the wrong side. So that's what you can see there and that's what understitching accomplishes. So please don't skip the understitching, don't just top stitch it on the edge, you're gonna see the wrong side of the fabric. And maybe it won't be that important if your right and the wrong side is, is the same. But in a case like this where it's really noticeable, I think you really can't skip the understitching. So. Go ahead and do that, please. <laughs> I made my own bias tape for this one. I had enough for a little piece and I did make it. And I think it's always so nice when you have the same fabric. And I've got a little secret to share. My yoke piece inside is pieced. I did not have enough to cut them both, you know, on the fold. So my external yoke is cut on the fold nicely. But the one inside that no one sees has a center seam. And don't be afraid to do that. If you need to get your pattern piece out of somewhere, you can add a seam, no one's gonna know, or you can even cut it out of another type of fabric that matches and have it as a lining instead. It won't be seen and it's a way to just save on fabric and use what you have. So little sneaky seam that no one knows about. You can see the seams are all enclosed there and there. So neat, so nice. I love it. <laughs> Let's see how it looks on. I've got it paired with a simple black pencil skirt that I use all the time outside in the backyard. This is one of my ballad tops in a polka dot with red linen contrast plackets. It's a rayon linen blend, super drapey. I've got a sleeveless version. And united to the yoke, I've got the gathered version. There is another one that has a shirt version here on the shoulder. I've got a nice curved hem. I have added one and a half inches to the length between my bust and my waist for this one so that the waist notch is actually at my waist. Just length adjust because I'm a little bit taller and this is a Cibo Illusion pencil skirt with a zipper hack that I made a few years ago I wear it all the time closer you can see this placket it's linen it's essentially like an exposed facing because inside you have the wrong side of the fabric the placket was sewn on the wrong side and then flipped over to the right it's interfaced and gives enough structure for all these buttonholes have a lot of buttons. You can see it's nice and roomy at the waist and the hips. Very nice drapey fabrics are perfect for it. Curved hem at the back. If you wanted it straight, you could straighten it out, easy to do. This is one of the earlier tester versions. In that case, this area was curved, as you can see. The final version actually has a little sharp corner there that is the only difference. Otherwise, everything is sort of the same. It's lying nice and flat, it looks really, really nice. And the depth of this V is very appropriate, very nice. The sleeveless armhole works perfect. I didn't have to adapt anything to make it sleeveless and have the cover that I like. So nice, I really like this. My pre-tester version was perfect and that's always a win. I always love getting a wearable garment out of a pattern test. And I was quite confident, that's why I went ahead and made it with a nice fabric from the get-go. Love it, so nice. I know I'm gonna get a ton of wear from this top. So nice, the black, red and the white is something I always love. And I'm very happy, very comfortable, very wearable. Just something that I know I'm gonna pull out and wear a lot. Don't you think this is starting to wear? What can I do?
I wanted to make my official Testa version out of a really special fabric and it was so hard to choose because I have so many of them. But one stood out and I had just the right amount. It's actually the first fabric I bought ever when I got to Brazil in 2018. We had a, a bit of a dark period where we were living in a hotel and didn't have a house for a few months. And yeah, it was pretty rough. I couldn't sew for a long time. I couldn't even make it into town for a long time because we're in a rural area. One day I was able to go there and I had some cash and I just wanted to make myself happy. And I bought that one specific cut of fabric. That's the only one I bought in a fabric shop. <laughs> and I made it to this little shop called Bacanina and they've told me they have some fabric here and uh, I'm not sure if you can see right there some fabric. I think this shop has like loads of other things too, so I'm just gonna go in and have a look. You know there's a theme going on here with the, color, <laughs> with the colors, black, red, yellow, white, yeah, just, but I just love it. I just love this so much. And I had it there and it's finally made. I know it's perfect for it. It's got vertical components, but with flowers, you see flowers going up and down. On one half of the fabric, the flowers are one size, and on the other half, they are smaller. So it's very nice, and I'm excited to share it with you. This is my official tester version, the one that's made as per the pattern with the final file of the pattern. And as I mentioned, the main difference was the shape here of the placket. You can see there's a little corner right there. You saw me snipping into there. I think snipping into there will just give you a really nice crisp result and without packets or anything like that. Just eyeball where the seam allowances meet in that area and just put a dot there so you know where to do that little pivot when you're doing your guide stitch. And then you can snip into there to get a really nice result when you go and press. It's really important to press the outer edges of these before you sew it on the neckline it'll just make it so much easier you saw exactly how that was done you can see the seam of the yoke there you, that's the seam of the placket the little gathers coming from there so pretty so nice and i've got short sleeves with the cuff you saw that the cuff had a little angle and that's the angle that's in there that removes space from the top of the cuff and means it won't stick out i think that's really pretty and better than doing a rectangle cuff so that's nice and because the wrong side of my fabric is very different I did that extra step of under stitching there just to make sure that the cuff will be folded out and the wrong side won't be seen when I'm wearing this so that's nice sleeve is really easy to sew you need to do a bit of a gathering stitch on the top to ease it in but it's not excessive and it's not hard to do to get a nice result without gathers or packers right there at the back there's the gathers right there my yoke and in this one, I also have a sneaky seam inside the inner yoke because there was no way I could get the fabric to, to work for me. So don't be scared of doing that. I do it all the time. <laughs> you saw that I did my hem before finishing the bottom of the placket. That's just my personal choice. I am using linen for these plackets, so it, it could be quite bulky if I just left it all together and then folded it twice, including the placket at the bottom. If I wanted to do it as per the pattern, that would be so, so bulky. But if I did that with a lighter weight fabric, I could do that. So I am just always adapting to what's best to the fabrics that I'm choosing. And the way I did it is super neat and less bulky because I have all that linen right there. This is my official tester version. Nothing changed to the pattern. I have one and a half extra inches added to the length between the bust and the waist just for personal fitting because I'm taller. Love the length, the curved hem, everything's really nice. And I love this vertical component that the placket in a contrast gives. Plus this fabric was too busy. I didn't really think it was gonna look too nice. I use the same one for the placket. I have short sleeves with a cuff and the gathered version here on the shoulder. I think depending on your height, what length you are going to have finished if you don't modify for length, but it's meant to hit the mid to full hip. I think it's a good length for me. Shorter here, I always like that. And I have tons of buttons going down. Here's the top of my ballet with the gathered shoulder, super nice into the yoke. I've got the short sleeve with a little cuff right there. It's hard to see the detail because it's printed, but the cuff is lying super flat against the sleeve because of the angle that this little section has that unites to the sleeve. I'm trying to show you the back yoke seam with the gathers coming from beneath. I hope you can see. This is how the placket looks up closer. Mine is linen. You could actually see it. I wanted to do that. And it has a corner right there. It's not rounded. 
That's why you saw me do the little snip so that would turn out nice and neatly. It fits against the chest so nicely and it unites to the back here on the seam that matches the shoulder seam right there. I love my ballad top. It's so happy, so summery, so colorful. Just the type of top I'm gonna reach out and grab because it's so pretty, it's so comfortable. I can move everywhere, I have enough ease. This is beautiful. I just love everything about it, so nice. <laughs> hope this video was fun to watch and I'm sure you're going to love this style as much as I've loved it. I know it's going to be a favorite and I'm gonna end up making tons and tons. I have another video coming soon that will have the hacks to this pattern because I've been working on those and you've seen a sneak peek of one of those in my pin tag video just recently. So keep your eyes open for that. You'll see other lovely versions with some hacks. I can't help myself and I wanted to make them separately in another video just to not mix everything and have this one be too intense, you know? Don't forget that today is the last day of the 40% site-wide sale. All the patterns are included 40% off except for the ballad blouse. The ballad blouse, because it's a new pattern, it's 25% off for its first week and that's through the 16th of May. I'll leave all the information down below, all my affiliate links if you want to use them and I hope you have a wonderful week of sewing and I really hope you give this pattern a go. It's so nice, so perfect for summer, it's something that you really really want to wear and I've really enjoyed sewing it and I know I'm going to love wearing it. I'll see you again very soon, have fun sewing, bye!